Welcome back. Next on Behind the Mystery, a disease that is often misdiagnosed and affects at least 500 to 1,000 patients each year in the U.S. Blastic plasmacytoid dendritic cell neoplasm, or BPDCN, is an aggressive and often fatal blood cancer that can mimic a dermatologic or skin condition. We're going to hear from one patient who has BPDCN, but first, let's learn the basics from oncologist Dr. Kendra Sweet from the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. BPDCN is short for Blastic Plasma Cytoid Dendritic Cell Neoplasm. It's a rare but very aggressive form of cancer that affects the bone marrow and the blood. In addition to the bone marrow and the blood, it can also affect other organs like the skin, lymph nodes, spleen, and in some cases, even the central nervous system. And over time, BPDCN can progress, usually very quickly, and behave much like a very high-risk acute leukemia. The exact prevalence of BPDCN is not really known for a variety of reasons. One is because I think it's commonly misdiagnosed. BPDCN can affect anyone of any race or ethnicity. About 75% of patients are men, with a median age of diagnosis ranging somewhere between 60 and 70 years. And about 10 to 20% of patients will have had a prior blood cancer diagnosed before their diagnosis of BPDCN. So historically speaking, the median survival from the time of diagnosis is anywhere from 8 to 14 months. And without treatment is oftentimes fatal. If the bone marrow is involved, then they may experience symptoms of low blood counts, such as fatigue, bleeding, bruising, and large lymph nodes may experience fevers. The symptoms can be fairly vague and can oftentimes be attributed to something more common um, until you put the whole story together. In 80% of cases, patients will present with or develop skin lesions of various size, shape, and color. The skin lesions in BPDCN can be variable. Some patients may present with a nodular lesion that's raised. Some it will be more like a bruise, sometimes a, a patch or a plaque. If somebody notices a suspicious lesion on their skin, it's critical that the affected area be biopsied and that blood tests get run, then be very quickly referred to a hematologist oncologist Dan Beers was enjoying life with his wife when his diagnosis came out of nowhere. While most BPDCN patients present with skin lesions, Dan was unique in that his disease only involved his bone marrow and blood. I always like to play a lot of golf. Uh, my wife considered herself a golf widow, and I, I used to go out with my friends a lot, and I did a lot of traveling, an awful lot of traveling. I was living my life and enjoying my life quite, quite immensely before I was diagnosed. Dan underwent routine pre-op testing for a surgical procedure. After his blood results came back abnormal, he was referred to a hematologist. Every time he tested my blood again that it was getting worse, not better, and that there was seriously something wrong and he was looking for different diseases, he couldn't quite figure out what happened. And he finally said that, uh, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. You need to see academics because I don't think another doctor can help you. I was a little depressed, alarmed, and then in somewhat of disbelief. A delay in obtaining the correct diagnosis can mean disease progression may have already occurred. Dr. Sweet discusses why BPDCN is difficult to diagnose. BPDCN can oftentimes be confused for other more common forms of blood cancer, like acute myeloid leukemia with skin manifestations like leukemia acutis, or in some cases a non-Hodgkin lymphoma or acute lymphoblastic leukemia or a chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. It requires a little bit more effort on the part of the pathologist and the treating team, I think, to conclude that the diagnosis truly is BPDCN. Dan was first misdiagnosed with AML, but after six months and seeing 10 different doctors, Dan received the correct diagnosis. Well, the more results have come in and that uh, you don't have AML, and I said, oh, that, that's good. And he said, no, it's worse. You have BPDCN, and at this time, there's no cure and there's no drug for it. So you need to go home and get your affairs in order, and that shocked me. 
There is a signature triad of markers that would be detected in, in a patient with BPDCN. So these abnormal cells have proteins on the surface that when tested for, we would find positive for something called CD123, another marker called CD4, and another one called CD56. And this combination, when seen all together, is, is diagnostic of BPDCN. He called me and said, we're starting a trial and you're qualified for it. And I started the treatment with the SL-401 or Elzandris as they call it now. When we come back, we're gonna discuss treatment options providing hope for patients. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we're talking about BPDCN, an often fatal cancer affecting the bone marrow, blood, and skin. Dr. Sweet discusses treatment options for the disease. Historically speaking, treatments were chemotherapy regimens that would be used for other forms of leukemia, like acute myeloid leukemia or acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or in some cases, a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In addition to that, we have stem cell transplant, which is a potentially curative therapy for patients with this disease. There is a treatment for BPDCN approved by the FDA specifically for the treatment of this disease. In 2018, the FDA approved Elzonris, the first and only treatment for BPDCN in adult and pediatric patients two years and older. For Dan, Elzonris provided hope where he thought there was none. Elzonris may cause serious side effects such as capillary leak syndrome, hypersensitivity reactions, or liver damage. See important safety information, including the body warning for Elzandris at the end of this segment. I'm on a drug called Elzandris and it's been treating my BPDCN. I kind of felt a, a, a sense of a relief or a, some sort of hope. And uh, I decided then that I would put my, put my, uh, all my effort into it. And I, that's what I did. I went back and, uh, and fought. I managed to make it through. My advice would be to find a specialty center with people who know this disease. It's exciting to see treatments in a setting where we previously had none, and we're improving the lives of these patients. And when you see that, it makes you wanna work harder to find something even better, even more effective, something that may be a cure for this disease um, if we just keep trying. This extra time with my family has been more than a gift. My opinion on something like what I have here is to keep moving on. You can't look backward and go uh, bury your head in the sand about it. You got to keep forward and you got to fight it. For more information on BPDCN, visit aboutbpdcn.com. And you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com. Important safety information, as well as the full prescribing information, is available at elzonris.com.